Hi everyone, welcome back to Seminole State College and our Public Safety Department. My name is Caitlin Gillian and today I have Chloe Browning with me. She's a recent paramedic graduate from here. I have the honor of being her teacher from EMT all the way to paramedic, so it's really nice to have her here with me today. We will be starting with stretcher operations and basically the logistics of the stretcher. The key thing here is red things move things, so don't forget that. So we're gonna start with one of the most important pieces of the stretcher and that's going to be the brake. This specific model only has one brake for all four wheels. Keep that in mind. Usually there's a minimum of two, but this specific model only has the one. It's gonna be down here. Right now we have it in the locked position. To take it out of unlock, you would just bring it up. So bring it down to brake, bring it up to unlock. So the lever that I'm gonna talk about right now is in this area here. It can move the stretcher up and down with just one person. Typically we use two people to move a stretcher up and down, but in the event that you needed to do it by yourself, you could use this lever to do that. I would just recommend doing the two-person method as it's the safest for yourself, your back, minimizes injury. Since this is a manual stretcher and not an electric stretcher, it has to get locked in place manually. This cylinder here on the bottom goes into the hook that's inside the ambulance and helps secure it in place so that the stretcher doesn't move around in the back. Over here, we have the bar that I was talking about to lock the manual stretcher into place. This is where the cylinder on the bottom of the stretcher is going to go. When the stretcher is locked, this will seal and close and basically lock to the stretcher itself. And then we just follow the red thing that moves things at the bottom of the bar. The arrows are pointing that way with an unlock symbol. You'll push it open and the stretcher will come undone from the locking mechanism. To continue the stretcher, we're gonna start at the feet. Typically, we can hold an oxygen cylinder here. I want to reference that this specific model has the oxygen cylinder holder at the feet of the stretcher. Some of them do have it at the head. So don't assume that the oxygen is always going to stay at the foot or the head of the stretcher. It does just depend on the model itself. The red handles that are located here on the left hand side do the same exact thing. This is where we unlock and lock the pins in place that move the stretcher up and down. So here at the feet of the stretcher, we have the option of elevating the legs and we just raise it up by the yellow bars on the side. This helps put our patient into something called shock position so that we can continue shock management. We can raise it up just by lifting on the yellow bar, but to bring it down, we do have this lever on the bottom that has an arrow with an unlocking icon where we pull up and it comes down all on its own. Coming up the stretcher, we do have these hands Rails. We can move them up and down by using the red lever that's on the bottom. Again, red things move things. So we just squeeze and it comes down. And then to bring it up, we can just bring it on up just like that. Keep in mind that this model, the handrails move up and down in this direction. The newer models, they do open out and then they can come back up. Now we're at the head of the stretcher and this is how we can sit our patient up or we can lay them down depending on what our patient requires at that time. So to move the head of our stretcher, we use this red lever and we push it in towards the patient and it can go all the way up to about a 90 degree angle. And then to bring it back down, you're gonna do the same thing, push this in towards the patient and you're gonna need a little bit of force on the top to bring it back to a leg position. Sometimes we end up in situations or scenarios where our stretcher is just too long for the area that we need to work with. So we can easily cut this stretcher in half by raising up this red bar and lowering it down. Now to bring the stretcher back up, all you have to do is raise on the yellow bar and it will lock into place. You will notice that this is a little wiggly and that is okay. It is locked in this position and you are able to put some materials or supplies on the back here. When we load the patient into the stretcher, we want to make sure that this black bar here connects to the hook that's on the end of the ambulance. This makes sure that the stretcher doesn't fall out of the ambulance in the event something were to happen to the person who was loading them in. Just keeps everyone nice and safe. When we put our patients on the stretcher, we like to make sure that they're secure. So we put the side rails up and then we put their seat belts on.
on. Typically, there's some straps for the legs and or the feet. We've got the ones that go across the lap, and then this one does not have them, but sometimes there are stretcher straps. They would be connected back here, and they would come up and around, and would basically give our patient a five-point harness. When moving the patient up and down, we want to make sure that we are in the proper squat position and we're holding the parts of the stretcher that make the most sense for our bodies. So I'm going to use the top lever due to my height and bringing the patient down. And then over here, Chloe is going to talk about where she's going to grab so that we don't drop our patient. So the person at the head of the patient is going to grab these bars right here. You want to make sure that you're not holding on to this safety bar at the bottom or holding on to this right here because because that's not the most practical way to do it. You also wanna remember that at the head of the patient, you are gonna have a little bit more weight, so you want to make sure that you're using your legs to lift instead of your back. When you lift a patient up or down, you need to make sure that you're having clear communication with your partner. Sometimes when our patient's head is all the way up or they're sitting up, it might be difficult to speak with your partner. So you just wanna make sure you're on the same wavelength. At some point, you will just have kind of a way to communicate with your partner without having to speak for this exercise. Exercise, I will be counting down and we will move on three. Heard. One, two, three. Going to squeeze and bring down. We're gonna bring our patient up on three. Okay. One, two, three. Down here, the lever that we use to unlock the mechanism of the stretcher, we have to squeeze the handle. When we squeeze, it unlocks. So I'm going to lift and squeeze and it will unlock the pins and then I'm able to bring it down. When I release the handles, it locks the mechanism in place. So one more time, I'm going to squeeze and then I will release the lock and then I will bring it down. I can guarantee that it will lock at the top if you release. That's how the mechanisms do work in the stretcher. It's when the load and the pressure is applied that you will hear that click. In order to make sure that the stretcher can get into the ambulance, we have to have it all the way up. When the stretcher is all the way up, you'll see that it's at an angle. If it's parallel to the ground, it's not all the way up yet. We can also tell that the stretcher is all the way up because on the bottom, we have this little sawtooth where there are little hooks that the locking mechanism can go into so that the stretcher can have different heights. Now we get to put the stretcher into the ambulance. The person who's at the feet of the stretcher, who's in charge of the lock in it and the unlock, is going to use as much leverage as they can. I would highly recommend using the one that's on the bottom so that you're bringing your wrists up to your armpits and not having to come up higher since the patient would be technically higher in that aspect. So the partner's job when they're lifting is to close this stretcher down so that it'll fit in the ambulance. You want your left hand to be on this handrail right here for a few reasons. One, we want it to feel like we're closing our hands together, bringing them together, instead of lifting with only one hand, which would flip the stretcher. Another reason we do it is so that my patient who's in the stretcher knows I am right here. If they need me, they can hold on to my hand and it gives them a level of comfort. As you can see right here, there is a sticker that tells you exactly what to do. So you're gonna put your hand on this bar and as your partner lifts it up and you hear that unlocking mechanism go, you're just gonna close together like an accordion and then you'll slide right in to the ambulance. The safety bar that's on the stretcher, and this is the safety hook to make sure that the stretcher doesn't fall out of the ambulance when we're trying to load the patient into the ambulance. When we put the stretcher into the ambulance, it has to be all the way up, otherwise it's not going to fit. Our stretcher is all the way up. We know that because it's at an angle, and I looked at the sawtooth on the bottom and made sure I was all the way at the top. You're going to hear a couple of thuds and then you're gonna bring the stretcher back and make sure that the safety is on and that the stretcher is locked in place. Now we get to bring our patient on the stretcher out of the ambulance. I'm going to start by using the arrows with the unlock to release the cylinder that's attached to the stretcher. And then I'm going to do the motions that I did to bring it in, but just in reverse. So at this point, I'm going to squeeze and my partner is going to help lower the legs of the stretcher from the yellow bar from before. Okay. 
Right now, my stretcher has the safety and it's connected to the hook. If I wanna take it out of the ambulance, I'm going to lift up the safety bar from the bottom, bring it up, and the stretcher will slide out of the ambulance. When moving a patient on a stretcher, there must be at least two providers on the stretcher at all times, which means there's one in the back and one in the front. Thank you for watching Stretcher Operations here with Seminole State College in the Public Safety Department. My name is Caitlin Gillian. I'm Chloe Browning. And we'll see you on the next video.